Okay, in this section, we like to discuss the high pressure compressor, the HPC. The purpose of the high pressure compressor is to provide compressed air for combustion. This is a 14 stage axial flow compressor. And we'll talk about the details of this component a little bit later. But if you look at it, it looks like a very complex machine. But these linkages are basically for VSVs and inlet guide vanes. And that's just to allow or prevent a stall or a surge, which we'll talk about in the next section. The high pressure compressor, the purpose is to compress air for combustion, but it consists of two major components. The uh, first component is the rotor, which mounts the blades, and the stator case, which houses the stator vanes. The uh, HPC, or the high pressure compressor, uh, consists of a 14 stage axial flow compressor. It also looks we look at the stator casing here and it looks quite uh, cumbersome with the variable inlet guide vanes and VSV actuators and the manifolds that's on it. But they all serve a purpose and we'll discuss each one of them. Let's talk about the stator casing. The stator casing is broken up into an upper and lower half. The very first set of vanes in your stator casing is uh, VIGVs, variable inlet guide vanes. There are not a stage of compression, however. They only direct the airflow into the compressor, provides a smooth airflow uh, into the compressor. The following stages, one through five, are VSVs, variable stator vanes. The purpose of those is to prevent a stall or surge. And those things actually pivot and, you know, changes, they ch produce a change of resistance of airflow. At lower speeds and startup, they'll be more open. As the compressor comes up in speed and comes up on load, they'll close off, get a little bit tougher for the compressor to produce pressure. Then you have a a stage manifold and 11 stage manifold and that's nothing but like pipe welded on the stator casing to collect bleed air and bleed air is anytime when you extract air from the compressor it's like if you cut the surface of your skin you bleed that's how they came up with the name with bleed air you're extracting air from the internal workings of the turbine itself and we extract it and we're going to send it out uh, for other purposes such as cooling and sump pressurization. The rotor is made up of disc and spools. We talked about that in the LPC section, but a disc is basically like a CD disc. It's one disc that mounts only one set of blades. A spool could mount several uh, stages of blades, and typically they're mounted, the blades are mounted circumferentially on spools, where on a disc they're mounted actually. The very front section of this compressor rotor here, you see, you at, the blades are really long, so they'll have mid-span platforms on them. And basically that mid-span platform is just to give us some structural strength and uh, prevent uh, whipping or uh, vibration of those longer blades. As the air goes through the compressor, the blades get smaller. Again thermodynamics we're going from a large volume to a small volume hence pressure and temperature will increase and so will velocity okay here we have the HPC the high pressure compressor and as you can see this is a 14 stage compressor however some of the blades are missing but some of these uh, blades are mounted actually meaning that they slide actually along the axis of the engine. However, some of these blades are mounted circumferentially. And the reason why is this rotor is made up of disc and spools. A spool is like a spool of thread. It has several stages in a hollow chamber, like, like a barrel, right? The reason why we do that is it reduces weight. And the, and the reason why we want to reduce weight, again, this engine is an aero derivative engine. It was meant for flight. 
Other gas turbine engines, as an industrial turbine, may have several stages of disc. They don't care about the weight. On, a, uh, on the CF6, we do. Okay, here's a great example of the statter case of the HPC. You have an upper and lower half casing, right? A statter case, and inside the statter case, you see your veins. These veins are all cantilevered inward as the rotor rotates inside of this casing. On the outside of the case, you have bleed air ports, and you also see your VSV actuators and your rings. As these rings rotate around the stator case, all of these veins pivot with the movement of these rings. And it's all controlled by a VSV actuator. Now let's talk about the high pressure compressor variable stator veins. Okay, as I said, the variable inlet guide vein, which is the very first one that's connected to this actuator, these actuators are mounted uh, 6 and 9 o'clock on the, uh, the uh, HPC stator case. Again, HPC is high pressure compressor. But basically, this actuator arm will go up and down based on this actuator that's mounted here. And as they move up and down, it pivots all of the veins simultaneously. All five stages of VSVs in one uh, set of inlet guide vanes, or we call it the VIGV, variable inlet guide vein. But as I said earlier, uh, the variable inlet guide vein is not a stage of compression, but the following VSVs are a stage of compression, and hence these are the ones that actually uh, prevent a stall or surge. And that's the whole purpose of the VSV system, is to prevent a stall or surge at low speeds, transitioning loads, or startup. Let's discuss a stall or a surge. A stall can happen when the compressor of the air moves from its direction of motion, known as the angle of attack, to a point where you create a turbulent flow. The turbulent flow can be caused by anything. It could be deposits on the uh, blades and veins or even a nick or a dent on the, the smooth surfaces of the blade. And as you can see in this picture here, here's a ner uh, normal flow of air around the blade. And here you can see the turbulence here at the where the angle of, of attack shifted. And that's kind of where a stall will come into place. And it could be a localized stall as well as a stall in a certain uh, several stages. Uh, normally we'll combat in this two different ways. Uh, one is one uh, method is uh, using VSVs, variable stator veins, and the other is bleed air valves where you actually bleed off some of the air. Uh, a stall or surge mostly will happen in normal conditions during low speeds or startup. So at startup you want the bleed air valves open or your veins your variable stator veins open. Uh, as you come up on load, those things will close off um, and then allow normal airflow. And mainly the reason why this is happening is because those blades that I showed you at the front of the compressor are really long, lar a lot of area, a lot of volume. And at low speeds, it's pushing too much volume that those little blades at the very back end of the compressor can handle. It's not, they're not rotating fast enough to handle the air volume, the volume of air. So uh, to prevent this again is uh, variable stator veins or bleed air valves. On the LM6000 we use variable stator veins. Steel flow compressors and in this uh, topic here I want to talk about thermodynamics of uh, the actual flow compressor. Here we have a picture of a drum type rotor uh, or a drum type compressor and the reason why I say it's a drum type is that the rotor itself is uh, the same diameter here at the aft end as it is in the forward end so it is a consistent diameter throughout the stages of compression and here you see the 
the blue uh, blades that are mounted on the uh, drum type rotor. So in this particular picture here, you'll see that uh, the forward stages of the blades are longer or larger than the aft stages. So air, we could say that uh, air flows in uh, this direction. So as air flows into the first stage blades, it, it gets thrown against the first stage veins. Then the second stage blades picks it up, throws it on the second stage veins. Then it goes to the third stage and so on and so on. The drum type rotor here, like I said, has a, con uh, a consistent or constant diameter throughout the uh, stages, but the uh, case itself is tapered. So the uh, volume here is a lot larger than the volume here. So we're squeezing the air as it goes through the compressor. And as you squeeze the air, uh, temperature will increase. But as I said, volume will actually decrease, right? Because volume, we're actually shoving a larger volume of air into a smaller um, space. So volume will go down. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with a mouse, but uh, you get the picture. The key is that uh, as the rotor rotates, that blade, that blue part, will actually rotate and creates a low pressure area right here in, the, in that blade area. And as it creates a low pressure area, um, it allows air to get sucked into the compressor. The, uh, the blade, as it rotates, is pushing and spinning and it's slinging that uh, air to the vein and the vein is stationary so in the blade area so over here is a blade we can we can say that pressure we'll put a p here pressure will actually decrease right because we're putting we're creating a low pressure area here so but uh, velocity will actually increase in a blade area until it hits the vein once once we hit the vein velocity goes down but pressure will go up and that happens over and over and over again the key to remember though as we go down the, st the stages of compression and keep in mind a stage of compression is a set of blades followed by a set of veins uh, as this goes through velocity continues to increase throughout the compressor so overall velocity goes up and pressure goes up One last takeaway here on this diagram, uh, you notice that you have a vein here. The veins here are white, but um, this vein right here is a VIGV um, or an IGV, inlet guide vein. Here in this picture, I can't tell, you can't tell whether it's, I'm assuming that it's a fixed inlet guide vein, but um, the inlet guide vein has, it's not a part of compression, so it's not considered a stage for compression. But that's pretty much thermodynamics through a compressor. Temperature will increase, uh, velocity will increase, pressure will increase, but volume overall goes down. Again, because we're shoving all that air into a smaller space. And that's, you know, that's done, you know, mechanically.